What I'd like to do is go ahead and start off with a NeoCP object. Uh, this is C06861. And the reason I chose this object is because a friend of mine posted about it. Uh, he made these three observations of the object, uh, and he mentioned that he had some fairly high residuals, 1.1, uh, 1 1.7. 1 so these are fairly high residuals. And uh, the thing to note here is that he made these observations using a different program. So the question is, what kind of results might we see if we were to run these same images through the Tyco software? So let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm going to launch the Tyco program. And um, this is version 2.x, as you can see. So this is not currently an available version, but it will be shortly. And so I've also plate solved. I went ahead and plate solved the first image, uh, as you can see. Uh, these, these later versions of Tyco, you only have to plate solve the first image, so that makes things very quick. Uh, so let's go ahead and run the tracker uh, on these images. And so the first step is to specify a uh, static threshold. Uh, all this does is um, suppress stationary objects from forming a detection, uh, like stars, for example. So I went ahead and specified uh, a reasonable threshold for this value, uh, for this setting. And so let's go ahead and click OK and proceed to the next uh, uh, step. So sensitivity threshold, I usually choose a value of, say, 10. Uh, we have uh, about 120 images here, and that's a lot of images. So a uh, value of 10 means a fairly sensitive threshold. And, and so that's, uh, but we have a lot of images here that uh, we can work with. So that's usually OK. Um, so now uh, the object here is, uh, it, we have a lot of observations already. Uh, so we actually have a fairly decent idea of speed and position angle, uh, 80 seconds per minute and 87 degrees. Uh, so I went ahead and plugged in plus or minus 2 for the speed and plus or minus 10 degrees for position angle. And that yields about 2,000 search vectors. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK, start the tracker off, and let's see uh, what it comes back with. Uh, so, <clears throat> OK, it says no tracks identified, uh, not a problem. Uh, the good thing about this is it's very quick. So if we do happen to make it, uh, if we do have to make a separate or a second pass, uh, it's not a big deal. So uh, uh, again, this time what I'll do is I'll actually choose uh, a, a threshold as sensitive as possible. Um, so there's no reason not to do that, um, except it does take a bit more time and you potentially get some more false detections. Um, now it's not going to take uh, 56 minutes or it's certainly not going to take 1.4 hours. Uh, this estimated time remaining uh, is applicable for when you're conducting a blind search, uh, meaning you didn't specify limits on speed and position angle. But we did, and therefore it's not going to take nearly that long. Uh, in fact, it should finish up here uh, pretty shortly in a, in a few moments. And then we'll see what kind of results we come back with using this more sensitive threshold. So, uh, okay, it came back with uh, two uh, candidate detections, and it looks like the first detection is a valid, uh, a true detection, and the second one is, uh, is not so much. So anyhow, that's, that's great. So e even if you do have a false detection or so, not a problem. Uh, it, it sorts all these tracks by quality, and so you can see that our first detection uh, is ranked number one. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and load up the star catalog, and I'm using the offline version Gaia DR2, so it's very quick. And um, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the images here and, and see what's going on. So I can actually scroll through the images here and you can see the object tracks in the crosshairs and it looks like it left the field of view. So uh, it started out, um, let me go ahead and zoom out a bit. So it started out uh, right here in the field of view and as we progress through the images, uh, you'll notice that it leaves the field of view um, around, uh, looks like, uh, image 87. So a negative value in the X component uh, that, that indicates it has left the field of view and uh, we no longer see it. So let's go ahead and actually run this. Uh, we're going to get much better results if we run uh, the software uh, with images for which the object is in the field of view the entire time. So now that we know that it left uh, the field of view on image 87. Uh, we'll go ahead and remove those images from the data set. And again, we can run the tracker. Uh, again, it doesn't take very long, so uh, no big deal. And I'm going to click OK. And uh, this time we'll get uh, potentially even different results. Uh, 
but I still expect it to show up as track number one. Um, so let's give it a moment here. Um, <clears throat> okay, so one more moment. Okay, so again, yeah, so it looks like it's still track number one. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do what I did before, load up a star catalog. And uh, this time, I can, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and optimize the track and verify. And so uh, what we are looking at here, if I zoom in, um, the object in question. So this is another nice thing about this, uh, these upcoming features. Uh, the contrast and intensity controls are a bit more intuitive to use than the previous versions, uh, these sliders here. And uh, you know, so you can definitely see the object very nicely. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and create observations of this object. So um, yeah, this is uh, C06861, and um, so I went ahead and created these observations. And when I did that, uh, you can notice these other two overlays. Um, so this gives information about the observation that's currently being displayed, and this gives information about the object and questions of the speed and position angle and designation. Okay, so um, what we'd like to do now is determine if these observations are any good. So we went ahead and generated them, and uh, the thing to do now is compare with the submitted observations. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these, and I have the text file of the uh, of the original observations, uh, they are over here. If you just bear with me for a moment, so indeed this is the. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, so these are the original observations, and um, I'm just going to paste over them, um, and save, and then I'm going to load up. So these again, these were the residuals that we had originally. So we had 1.7. So now I'm going to open up again. Uh, see what, what happens this time. So now we have, instead of a 1.7, we have a 1.3. So, you know, still, you know, higher than normal, but uh, that's better than what we had originally. So, so I think this does a good job of um, pointing out uh, what we can do with Tycho. Uh, again, it was fairly straightforward, uh, in my opinion, uh, to detect the object, uh, even, though, even though the object uh, was outside the field of view, um, uh, for a good chunk of the images. Uh, we still did a decent job detecting it. And we have these also uh, uh, new overlay features. Um, uh, we can, if we wanted to, I can show that off as well. The font and uh, size uh, can be adjusted. So all that's customizable. If we wanted Comic Sans, we can do that as well. Um, anyway, uh, but the point is um, that there's some nice features um, coming up here shortly that I think a lot of users will appreciate. And um, I think this also does a good job showing, indeed, uh, you know, uh, NeoCP objects are, are very easily processed with Tycho. So anyhow, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching.